Today, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about this, the Speedy B Adapter 3. If you don't know what it is, it's a small Bluetooth and Wi-Fi adapter that allows you to connect your smartphone or tablet, whether it be running Android or iOS, to your Beta Flight flight controller. This, via the Speedy B app, allows you to do things such as configure all of the Beta Flight settings, download black box logs, even upgrade the Beta Flight firmware as well. It also has a couple of other party tricks too, such as a built-in main pack voltage checker, a 30 watt battery bank so you can actually charge your smartphone in the field via a LiPo, and you can even configure some BL Heli S ESCs with it. What we're going to do today is give you guys a bit of an overview of the adapter, walk you through how it actually works and the kind of things you can do, and then at the end I'm going to give you my thoughts having spent a bit of time with it because I've been using it pretty much solidly over the past couple of weeks. Anyway, let's get on with it. Let's take a closer look at the adapter itself first of all. So the SpeedyB Adapter 3, it's a sort of wireless bridge that communicates between your flight controller and your smart device such as your phone or tablet. As I mentioned, it works with Android and iOS. And whilst there has been ways in the past to connect Android to your flight controller via an OTG cable, the real big benefit of this adapter is it works with iOS as well. So you can simply go to the App Store, download the SpeedyB app, and then use this adapter to be able to configure your flight controller. Now, if we take a dive in and look closer at the hardware, the device itself is a small adapter, bright yellow, as you can obviously see. If we look around it on the bottom, we have our battery ports, we have our XT60 as well as another input. We then on the side, have a USB-A port, and this is for the battery bank functionality. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Then on the top, we have this included cable that loops through. Now, this device has two ports. It has a micro USB and a USB-C, and the cable is the same. We have a micro and a USB-C. And the idea of this is it allows you to choose the connector that you have for your flight controller. So for instance, if your flight controller has micro USB, you simply put the USB-C end into the adapter and then plug that into your flight controller, or alternatively, if your flight controller was USB-C, you would simply do the opposite and plug it in and go like that. Now to connect this to your flight controller, as I've already said, is really easy. We simply take the end that we want. So we're gonna want the micro USB for this one. And then we simply find that port on the quad and then take the adapter and plug it in. Once we're in, we then need to take our LiPo, plug it in at the bottom, and then wait for it to connect. Now, there are a couple of things you need to check for when you are doing this. What it will do is plug into your flight controller and you need to wait for it to actually communicate and synchronize. When it does, it will come up with a little flashing red symbol here, sort of a flashing Bluetooth symbol to show that the connection from the adapter to the flight controller is actually working correctly. So as you can see, we've now got the little flashing Bluetooth symbol in red, which is telling us we've got the communication between the adapter and the flight controller. Now I've already gone to the app store and downloaded the SpeedyB app onto my phone. It's available for both iOS and Android. So to connect, what we first of all need to do is choose the options we want. So if I click on the side here, we've got home, firmware flashing, black box, BL Heli configurator, and some other options as well, which we'll take a look at in a second. To do the connection, we simply click on the Bluetooth symbol down here and it's found the adapter and you then simply click connect. Once that, it'll start communicating with the flight controller and you can then see the little Bluetooth symbol has gone solid green to show us that there's a connection between the phone and the adapter and the adapter and the flight controller. Now, the real nice thing about this is the SpeedyB adapter app will basically give you the full functionality that you get in Betaflight. We can literally do pretty much anything we want to do. So we've got the main setup page, we've got the ports configuration, we've got the settings configuration under the main config menus, everything under here. So again, you can do everything that you can do in Betaflight configurator pretty much via this app. You've even got CLI at the bottom as well if you want it. So the real nice thing about this is anything you need to change in the field, you can do it via this app. And whilst there is stuff you can do via your remote controller, for instance, via Lua scripting, it is nice to be able to do all this configuration 
via an app like this as well. And again, along the top, it shows us the standard options telling us what's connected. So we've got gyro accelerator, accelerometer, sorry, and barrow. So it's all there ready to go. We can also do things like download black box logs on this too. So for instance, if I click disconnect, go back to the main page, you can see the lights now gone back to flashing red. If I go down to black box, it actually goes into portrait mode at this point. Click import from flight controller. It will again ask us to connect, which we will do. Load black box files, and then it will ask us to switch over from Bluetooth to Wi-Fi. So for the file transfer part, it wants you to use Wi-Fi rather than Bluetooth for the communications. Failed to find black box logs, and that is because on this flight controller, there's none actually on there because there's no SD card. However, what I'm going to do now is hop onto a flight controller that does have built-in memory, and we'll take a look at that one. So I've swapped over to a different flight controller now. I'm going to click on import logs. We're going to connect to the adapter, and then it's going to ask us to switch over to the Wi-Fi. Oh, it looks like it's done it automatically this time. Oh, there it is. Then we're going to download the logs. Now, this can take a little bit of time five, 10 seconds for it to just come up with the list of logs that are available. You can see that's now populating. So we can go down. And what I think we'll do is we'll download this one, which is four meg. Now, the bigger the log file, the longer it will take to transfer. It is doing it via Wi-Fi, but as you can see for a four meg file, it's not terrible. That's probably gonna take about a minute, but there is a bit of time involved in that transfer. So as you can see, the logs now come up on the screen and I can scroll through and then we can start getting into it. You'll start seeing there, here's where the aircraft took off and you can start to see all of the log data being shown. You can zoom in and out and you've got most of the functionality that you would find in the log viewer. So for instance, we can, we can toggle the joysticks on and off. You can toggle the motors on and off. You can go into settings and you can then choose what options you wanted to show on screen. So for instance, um, if we wanted our PID error, we can turn that on as well. So if you're looking for some very specific stuff and you don't want to bring a laptop with you, it will allow you to do that. Now, there is an option to export the logs as well, and you can save to local, send file, or generate and share QR code. I haven't been able to get this bit to do anything properly yet. So for instance, if I click save to local, it says saved locally. However, if I then go back into here and then import from local, it doesn't find anything. So I haven't been able to work out how that function works. And I'll talk about that with someone else a little bit later as well. So at the moment, I can't figure out how you save the logs. I can only really view them, but it is nice to have that functionality out in the field. Going back to the home page, as I've said, there is some other functionality as well, including the option to flash the firmware. Now, I haven't fully tested this, if I'm honest. I have tried it on one flight controller, but it didn't want to behave. But I will not blame the adapter for that because it is a Brain RE1 and they don't have straight off the shelf beta flight targets. And it has always been a pain to flash at the best of times. I haven't tested this. It says the functionality is there. It is one I would probably recommend using with caution, but there is no reason you can't use it. It also works with Emu Flight on that side of things as well. And we've also got the BL Heli configurator. Now, the website for this says BL Heli S. This will connect to the ESCs on my quads, which are not BL Heli S's, but they won't give us any options. So, for instance, if I just plug one in, Click Start Scan, click Connect, click Connect, and it goes into this screen. Now, it's clear that it's connected to the ESC because it's gone silent. However, it won't read in settings, and the motor test area doesn't work either. My assumption is this is only compatible with BL Heli S because that's what it appears to say on the website, but that functionality is there too. So just before I give you my thoughts, I just want to walk you through the power adapter functionality because it does allow you to use your LiPo to charge your smartphone via the USB port. It supports up to 30 watt and it supports QC3, AFC, as well as Apple 2.4 amp protocol. Now, to use this, you simply plug your cable into your smart device. So I'm going to plug it into my iPhone. We then plug it into the adapter. So if we go on the overhead, we plug it in and that will then begin charging. But the nice thing is what you can actually see on the screen. So if I go again 
down here back to Bluetooth. And rather than click connect, if I click the little power adapter symbol, it will take us into a different mode on the device and show us what is actually being drawn from the adapter. So for instance, it's showing we're charging with seven watts. This phone is quite well charged, so it's not going to draw too much, but it is going up. Charging current is 1.7 amp, charging voltage is 5.13 volts. And we can do things such as set low voltage alarm, display what we've got on the screen. So we can change that to show input voltage or charging power. So if I hit save, you can see it's showing us now it's charging at 9.3 watts. Hit save again. You also have a couple of options like hide the voltage in LED or clean charge mode. Now clean charge mode will simply turn off the little LED display. So you hit the button, turns off, and then basically it just goes into a dark charge. And the only way you'd know about it is with the LED on the side, or we can tap that off and turn it back on. And it's just some nice functionality that you don't usually get on battery banks and adapters. Now, just before I give you my thoughts on this adapter, I did want to make it clear that SpeedyB have sent this over to me for free. I have not paid for this. However, they have not paid me to make this video. They have not seen this video before it goes live and they've had no influence in my thoughts. As always, my opinions are entirely my own. Now, I spent two weeks with this adapter and I have to say there is a lot to like here. Easy to use, lots of little nice features, and it's good for iOS users that you have the ability to easily configure out in the field. For Android users, yes, you can simply use an OTG cable, but you do have all those little extra features such as the battery bank functionality and those other things around the configurators too, and the black box options. So if you did want to be able to do it, it does make life a little bit easier. Also, the little LiPo checker is handy because it's just easier at times to be able to plug in and go, oh, that pack's full or that pack's flat. With regards to the SpeedyB app, it has tons of options and really it behaves a lot like the Betaflight configurator. There isn't a lot you can't do via it and it's handy that you can change things like the port settings. And yes, you can do a lot of this stuff via the Betaflight Lua script on your radio, but it is nice to have that graphical user interface at times. However, I do want to add on the SpeedyB app, there are a couple of things that bug me. One of them is the fact that it makes you wait before you can use it. It has a countdown to show you an advert. I do understand why SpeedyB do this because that app is available to download for free and it will also work with the OTG cable as well. However, it would be nice if it could detect you're using a paid adapter rather than you having to wait when you've bought the hardware. Now, while that's the good, I do want to talk a little bit about the bad. And I will be honest, I have had some problems getting this adapter to connect to my flight controllers. It isn't that it won't connect to one or two specific ones. I've had issues where it will work one minute and won't next. If you watched my live stream a few weeks ago, I actually did it live on air and I was having lots of problems then too. Now, since then, I've had a lot more time to try it and play with it and try to understand what's going on as well as reach out to SpeedyB as well. I also contacted Mario at RC Shim and asked him what his experience was because I was having all of these issues, but he wasn't. And Mario has very kindly sent us over a video. So let's hop over and see what he has to say. Hello Ian, thanks for reaching out to me. I tested my SpeedyB adapter three and I didn't really find issues. I tested a lot of different copters, F4 and F7 copters, all of them worked, except for two on my wall, but those are two scrapped copters, which don't even have an RX, and I'm not sure if they work. So all my flight controls worked with this. One issue that I found on downloading black box data, it gets stuck at 92% and wouldn't continue, and it's also quite slow. But yeah, that's about the only year end, as I say in my review, I cannot save the black box files on my phone. They just, if they uh, load up all the way, you can display them and examine them, but you cannot download them to the phone or save them as a file. As you can see, Mario has had very few problems at all, especially compared to the ones I was having. So as I mentioned, to be clear, it would work on this quad and then it wouldn't, and then it would, and then it wouldn't, and it was not specific to any of them. There were periods where it just wouldn't work at all. Now, I think I have a bad cable. 
that is the conclusion that I've come to on this. I don't think it's the USB ports because I've tried moving around. I actually think it is the USB-C side of the adapter cable they've supplied. I'm going to try and get SpeedyB to send me another one. However, this one for me does work very well when it does work, but there are periods where it just will not connect at all. However, I can't say everyone else's experience of that is the same, but at the end of the day, I did want to share with you guys the problems that I was having because that I can only review something based on my own experiences. I'm hoping to get another cable from Speedy B and then I'll try it again and I will update you guys in the future. What I would say is this, when it works, it works absolutely brilliantly and absolutely fine. It's a shame you can't save those black box logs or certainly I haven't found a way to do it yet. The firmware flashing, not so sure about that, but the general main functionality, it does a fantastic job of. It's just, it seems to at times not want to connect. I have found that there is a certain process you have to follow. You do need to connect it to the flight controller, then plug the battery in and wait for that flashing red LED. If that LED isn't there flashing, it will not connect. And that is the important thing to check. And what I have found is when I've done it and manipulated that cable by the, it's suddenly kicked in. So I think I might have an issue with that. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you're interested in getting yourself one, I will put a link to it in the description on the SpeedyB website. I do want to thank SpeedyB for sending me one over. Very, very interesting. I really do recommend having one in the bag. Anyway, just for the power bank features, it's just a handy little adapter to have, especially if you are an iOS user, because it just means you have that same functionality that you can get on Android as well. And that's pretty much it for this one. Now, if you'd like to help and support the channel, please do consider hitting the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the little bell next to it as well. Furthermore, there are links to Patreon as well as Buy Me A Coffee if you'd like to support us on a more regular basis. I also have my own Discord server and there's a link to that in the description of the video as well. So if you'd like to check that out, please pop over and say hello.